21 years old, receding hairline. What age could I have surgery? I'm self-conscious about my hairline, as I'm 21, and it has receded considerably in the last three years. My father is half bald and still has hair in his temples in the back of his head. Fortunately, my hair is still quite dense, but my father's hair became very thin at the age of 25. Do you have any advice on how to maintain thick hair, and at what age would I be able to have surgery to fill in my receding hairline? I maintain a clean diet and exercise regularly. Thanks. Thank you for your question. You submitted a single photo and you're asking at the age of 21 with your history of hair loss over several years how you can maintain your hair before you move forward with a transplant. And it was very good that you described your father's hair loss history, which also appears to have had an early onset, and your description of his progression is very useful. Well, I'll tell you a little bit about how we approach hair loss in our practice, and this is probably something different from what you have learned about thus far in your research. I'm a specialist in hair loss, uh, board certified by the American Board of Cosmetic Surgery, and I've been performing hair transplant for many years. However, in the past several years, we've actually developed a new treatment for hair loss called hair regeneration. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that as we discuss your situation. First of all, you are, you're very smart to understand that there is ongoing progression. So instead of going forward and moving towards having a transplant while progression is going on, you're asking the question about how to stop it. So currently there are two medical treatments that are used in the United States for hair loss. One is finasteride or the drug, trade name Propecia. This is a drug that is a pill that you take every day and it inhibits an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase which inhibits the conversion of testosterone to dihydrotestosterone or DHT. And DHT susceptible hair follicles will miniaturize or eventually disappear and so DHT blocker like finasteride can be of value. Currently there's a lot of concern about the long-term sexual side effects of finasteride. Therefore, most of the people who come to our practice, males, do not take or do not want to take or had taken finasteride and felt the uncomfortable with continuation of the drug. The other drug is minoxidil. And for most people who are younger, in my experience, minoxidil doesn't do much of a job in terms of its benefit in preventing further loss. So that leaves you with very few other options because your progression at an early age and the rate of your progression is certainly something that cannot be treated to full potential um, or desire, I should say, with a hair transplant. It's very important to understand that even if you were to stabilize where you are, the amount of hair you need to restore what you had or to closer to what you had is still a lot and the hair transplant area is limited. So I'm going to discuss with you our treatment called hair regeneration. This is the use of a material called extracellular matrix combined with your own blood called uh, platelet-rich plasma. What we've developed is a formulation and a method and technique of delivery and what we're doing is we're treating the scalp with an injection and this injection treatment has been so successful for us that we've essentially dramatically reduced the number of hair transplants we do because in the right candidate we've seen that the results of hair regeneration treatment far exceeds the results of hair transplant. So what we have observed clinically is that hair that's thinning will become thicker. To understand the thinning process, you have to understand that there's a genetics to this. Hair grows in cycles, and with every cycle there is a shedding phase. 
when that hair comes back, it comes back thinner. And with each subsequent cycle, it thins, thins, thins. So it's really accurate to say someone has thinning hair. The treatment appears to salvage and restore the normal growth pattern of existing hair, as well as hair that is dormant. That means that when we do a mic, when you when you come to a practice like ours, what we do is we do a microscope examination of scalp. We look at the ratios of the thinning hairs to thicker hairs. We look at the at the top of your scalp and at different angles with digital photography, and of course we do an examination. What we have seen is that in areas where we don't see hair, very often we're still able to get growth. People misinterpret that and believe we're creating new hairs. We're not creating new hairs. What we're doing is, with the understanding of the hair growth cycle, that when hair is thinning, the hair um, growth cycle, called the antigen phase, gets shorter. The sleeping phase, when the hair sheds, called the telogen phase, and the, the middle phase, called catagen, actually become longer. So what it appears is that when we're doing this treatment, we're reawakening those hairs that were suppressed and were possibly to the point where they weren't going to come back. We can save hair that is salvageable, but if hair has been not present for more than three to five years in a given area, then it's less likely that we'll be able to restore that hair. We're often surprised by the, the, the robustness and quality of the results, but we, at this point, advocate early intervention. There's a large group of males who, are, who have early onset hair loss, like yourself, in their late teens to 20s and with very aggressive rapid progression. This is unfortunate because, as, for the, as, uh, as per the rule of decades where 20% of your contemporaries have hair loss, meanwhile 80% have a lot of hair, it certainly can have a tremendous effect on your, on your confidence when you're losing hair while everybody else has great hair. That changes, of course, as you get older, but at this time, this is what um, is, it can really have an impact. So for us, hair regeneration has been very, very successful. It is our first line of treatment. There are people that we even do second, second treatments on, uh, depending on what we observe in terms of salvaging of those very dormant hairs I spoke about earlier. Sometimes those hairs come back very thin, and we'll do a second injection, and they'll come back even thicker. So hair regeneration in, is what I would do if you were a patient that were to come to us. I would dissuade you from considering a transplant. I think a transplant, unfortunately, will not be adequate with the given rate of progression you're experiencing. And we've helped so many patients who have tried to keep up with their hair loss in their 20s. And by the time they hit their 30s, they have no more hair to transplant, and they still look like their hair is thinning. So that is a very unfortunate uh, a, a circumstance to be in. So with, for us, hair regeneration has become the, uh, the gift that it really is amazing and it's been wonderful and uh, you know, I don't want to sound like we're overly promoting it, but when you do your research you'll see that there's a large gap between medical therapy and then surgery. And what you are, the messaging is so strongly done on the internet is of course about surgeries, about grafts, number of grafts, technologies to get better grafts, but the bottom line is there's only so many hairs you can transplant. So I, I would advise you to learn more about hair regeneration, see if it's available where you are, and do more research to, to learn about these options. Time is not on your side, so intervention as early as possible is something we're advocating in our practice. We're treating a lot more men these days who are in this, these younger ages, and their responses have been really great. So I hope that was helpful. I wish you the best of luck. Thank you for your question.